as East Asia is bathed in morning sunshine. The countries of the Western Hemisphere are still enjoying yesterday's sunset. Asia accounts for nearly 30% of the world's land area and 60% of the world's population, distributed over 48 countries. These figures show the range and diversity of Asia. Asia is the most dynamic and promising area of the world today. It is home to the second and third ranked world economies, the nations with the fastest growing economies and the four Asian tigers which are miracles of economic development. Those achievements are reflected by the numerous bright lights in clusters distributed throughout Asia and all over the world. Even so, Asia is also home to nine of the world's least developed countries and most of the others are still developing. More than 700 million people live on less than $1.25 a day and these people account for 60% of the world's poor population. As a country which once enjoyed the fastest economic growth in the world, China now faces the test of declining economic growth, while the poorest countries still have broad scope for rapid economic development. Both economic development and poverty eradication require improvements in infrastructure. Facing the requirements of urgent improvements to the infrastructure, the need for solutions to fill tremendous funding gaps and with an eye on world economic integration, Asia has gradually become a community with a common destiny and future. Its nations seek methods and answers to solve problems together on the road of common development. On January the 16th, 2016, after more than 800 days of preparation, an international multilateral mechanism working to improve infrastructures, interregional connectivity and interconnection in Asia was officially opened in Beijing. This is the 基础设施投融资平台，在提高地区基础设施融资水平，促进地区经济社会发展中发挥应有的作用。In 2015. Beijing was already a cosmopolitan city with ancient palaces reflecting its deep sense of history and good infrastructure reflecting its modernization. Beijing is the capital of China and the development of Beijing is a microcosm of the rapid economic development in China over the last 30 years. If you look outside the window here, you would no longer believe it, but the World Bank wrote a report in 1994, a long time ago, where it said that China's big constraint on growth was infrastructure. And at that point in time, China was only investing 4 to 5 percent of GDP in infrastructure, which was not enough to maintain the very high growth levels. Then China majorly increased investment in infrastructure, and it could maintain that growth there for another 20 years. So, so infrastructure is simply very important for development. From China's This is Tiananmen Station, a transfer station on Line 8 of the Beijing subway, which is being tunneled out. 
From 2000 to 2015, the Beijing subway was in a period of fast development. The original two lines had a total length of 54.14 kilometers before the network was expanded to 18 lines covering 524 kilometers today. In Beijing, a subway station can be found every 800 meters or less. As one of those who uses the subway every day to cross the metropolis, Liu Ying begins her day. Liu Ying lives in Tongzhou district, an eastern suburb of Beijing. She is a sales representative at an insurance company. Visiting customers is her main job every day. Today she has to visit three clients in different parts of the city. If she chose to travel on the city's road, it would be impossible for her to finish her task today. The subway is the most efficient choice for her. This is the route map of clients Liu Ying will visit today. The total duration of her journey is 2 hours and 20 minutes, which is very efficient in a megacity with an urban area covering more than 750 square kilometers and a population of more than 20 million. The need for higher efficiency is tightening the requirements on transportation and logistics for economic development. The urban transport system, the blood vessels of the metropolis, dominates the operation of the whole city. The national road network supports the development of the entire country. Interconnectivity between countries affects the process of regional economic integration. If traffic lags behind economic development, economic operation will be delayed and start to decelerate, which could undermine economic development. Indonesia is the biggest economy in Southeast Asia. It is also the largest archipelic country in the world. In this country, made up of more than 17,000 islands, interconnectivity and the interconnections between the nation's multitude of islands have become the primary development problem which must be solved. Yao 杜龙江 Township, located at the junction of Myanmar and the Chinese regions of Yunnan and Tibet, is home to the only grouping of Durang people, with a population of less than 5,000. Every year, from October to May of the following year, the mountain passes are blocked by heavy snow, so are cut off from the outside world. In 2014, the newly built 96-kilometer road reduced the road journey from Dulongjiang Township to the county from eight hours to less than three. This greatly changed the lives of the local Drung people. Pu Guangrong lives in Puka Wan village, Dulongjiang Township. He and his family moved into affordable housing built by the government. Water pipes were built in the village, so the residents would no longer have to go to the local river to fetch water. 
It is almost two years since they moved into their new home. Young Drung people see that their lives are changing and are now very different to the lives their parents knew. Twelve-year-old Pu Chong Fan is Pu Guangrong's niece. She is studying at Du Longjiang Center School with her 15-year-old sister and seven-year-old brother. There are six villages in Dulongjian Township, distributed throughout the 2,000 square kilometer border area. Puka Wang village is more than 10 kilometers from the school. Previously, it was necessary for the students who lived this far from the school to walk for two days over the mountains to reach it, so some children dropped out. Today, now that new roads have been built, 800 students in nine grades can attend school and enjoy free food and accommodation. The school also provides a travel allowance to students who live far away from the school to make sure that every child can receive a modern education. New buildings have been built near Pukawang village. These include the health center of Dulongjiang Township. All the villagers now have new rural cooperative medical insurance. Drung doctor Li Jiang and medical staff from various areas of Yunnan provide convenient medical services for the villagers here. A nursing home has been built next to the health center in Dulongjiang Township. Nearly 50 old people will spend their remaining years in comfort in this quiet place. Owing to the convenient transportation, Pu Guang Rong and other drunk people who entered modern society directly from a more primitive society developed folk tourism based around characteristic drum culture. The improvement of roads, schools, nursing homes, water and power supply facilities and other public infrastructure projects has greatly changed the lives of the impoverished drum people. Promoting economic development by improving the infrastructure in poor areas is a successful strategy to solve the problem of unbalanced development in China. Unbalanced development is also a problem faced by many newly emerging countries in Asia. India is one of the fastest growing countries in the world. It is also a country which is experiencing unbalanced development. Even in Bombay, the unbalanced development in this western doorway of India can be seen everywhere. The earliest railways and oldest developed railway network in Asia can be found here. Today, Bombay's suburban railway is famous for its high passenger numbers. Public facilities are in urgent need of improvement, and great demands for interconnectivity and interconnection are obvious here. Some research institutions have formulated a reference value for infrastructure level by analyzing and sorting data on traffic infrastructure, communication, electric power, and other factors in each region of Asia. The higher the value of a country, the more perfect the infrastructure of the country is, and the higher the bulge in the chart will be. 68% of the countries in Central and Eastern Europe rate above the reference value. 59% of the countries in West Asia and North Africa meet the reference value. Most of the regions in Central Asia, South Asia and Southeast Asia are below the reference value. Only 36% of countries in Southeast Asia have values higher than the reference value, with Myanmar at the bottom of the rankings. 
Of the five countries in Central Asia, only Kazakhstan comes out higher than the reference value. The values of all the countries in South Asia are lower than the reference value. Both the successful experience of China and cognition in development of various countries have proved that strengthening infrastructure construction is the best choice for realizing economic growth and promoting structural adjustment. Therefore, Asian countries have made huge plans for investment in their infrastructure. Indonesian President Joko announced the construction of 3,600 kilometers of roads, 15 airports, 24 large ports and 15 industrial parks during his five-year term. As predicted, by 2020, the reconstruction and expansion of 80% of the roads and nearly 300 railway stations in Kazakhstan will be completed. In addition, more than 600 locomotives, more than 20,000 passenger carriages and freight cars will be replaced or repaired. As a country stretching across Eurasia, Turkey has made new economic stimulus plans to rank itself among the world's top 10 largest economies by 2023. Those plans include many major infrastructure projects, such as the Istanbul Canal and the Third Channel Bridge, three high-speed rail networks centered on Ankara, and investment and construction of a third airport serving Istanbul. The World Bank, one of the institutes providing most assistance for global development, and the Asian Development Bank, ADB, which mainly targets poverty alleviation, have been providing money to help the development of Asian countries. Angkor Wat was one of the four wonders of ancient oriental civilizations and is a world-famous symbol of Cambodia. This human cultural treasure from the 12th century has now become Cambodia's most important tourism resource. Wu Gang is probably one of the most important people to have visited Angkor Wat. In 2001, shortly after the end of the Cambodian Civil War, Wu Gang made his first visit to Angkor. In those days, this world-renowned cultural site was not open to traffic. Zhang Jinsheng and Wu Zhegang are colleagues. They both work for CRBC. They came to Cambodia 14 years ago when CRBC won the bid to build roads at Angkor Wat in a project financed by the World Bank. Cambodia has witnessed a tremendous boost from infrastructure construction especially from the changes brought about by improved road links. In 2013, Cambodia's Infrastructure and Transportation Department entrusted China's Planning and Design Institute to compile the overall development planning of highways in the Kingdom of Cambodia. Covering a total distance of about 2,230 kilometers, the highways radiating from Phnom Penh will be structured to connect all the main areas of Cambodia. Cambodia 
其他一些合作伙伴们帮助。我觉得这是也是比较，柬埔寨落网发展中间一个比较大的一个问题。因为他这个国家落后，这个经济实力呢还是薄弱，所以说他这个目前为止发展基础设施主要还是靠贷款，来自一些这个。国际组织像亚航、世航，还有中国政府，包括韩国。According to the ADB report published in 2009, the demand for total Asian infrastructure investment is estimated to be 8,280 billion dollars, with greenfield investment and maintenance and transformation investment accounting for 68% and 32% respectively. 这就是一个巨大投资，世界银行在亚洲，整个亚洲投资可能也就是三四十亿美元，是吧？国际货币组织可能更少，那么亚洲开发银行也就是这个，跟世界银行差不多，它那么一投资，那么加起来不到一百亿美元，跟那个七千亿美元的需求差得太远了。Annual demand for infrastructure investment is projected to be. Approximately 730 billion US dollars, but only three percent of that demand is met through bilateral and multilateral development funds. 私たちもちょっとあの少しその ADB の試算をあのアップデートしてみたんですけど、今から10年ですね。あの ADB の試算って2010年から20年ですけど、あの今2015年から25年の10年間で試算してみると、だいたい14兆ドルぐらいあのアジアで必要になってくるんですよ。The World Bank and ADB have achieved success in many Asian infrastructure projects and strongly support the development of Asia. However, Due to limited registered capital and the unsatisfied capital increase needs of emerging economies, the World Bank and ADB are unable to provide more capital support for Asian infrastructure construction. 而且呢，本身呢，它决策机制不是很透明，它的代表性也不是很强。它主要反映了发达国家的利益，对于这些发展中国家的利益呢。呃，考虑不足，所以这是既有的国际金融体系的这样一个缺陷。我们大家都认识到了，但是推动这个改革是非常困难的。The limited capital available and the orientation towards poverty alleviation also prevent the World Bank and ADB from fully supporting infrastructure construction in Asia. そうですね。あのえっと世界銀行と ADB の最終的な目的、貧困削減なんですね。その目的のためにあの支援をすると。ですからインフラ支援をするときも、このインフラが貧しい人たちにどういう利益をプラスの利益をもたらすのかということを分析しながら案件を作るんですね。Zhang Xiaoyu has been a subway train driver for 36 years since the subway went into operation. This photo is from when I first started the subway train. It was a memorable time for me. At that time, there were only a few countries that had the subway. So at that time, I could go to the subway to see the subway. That was a very important thing to do. It was a very special thing. On July the 1st, 1965, the first phase of the Beijing subway project officially started, but it didn't go into operation until 2000. That was Line One, which can handle over 1.5 million passengers per day. 30 years ago, the world thought of Beijing as a kingdom of bicycles. Nowadays, it's a really green way to travel. But actually, the crowded bicycle flows indicated Beijing's burning need for faster and more efficient ways to travel. Liu Li Zhong is responsible for the network dispatching room at Beijing's Rail Transit Command Center. The passenger flow volume handled on the 12 lines now in service. 
is one of the indexes he pays most attention to. He could already sense people's yearning for urban rail travel 25 years ago, when he had just started work. In the 30 years from the start of work on Line 1 in 1965 to the run-through with Line 2 in 2000, only 34.5 kilometers of subway line was in operation in Beijing. However, Beijing's population and urban area are entering a period of sharp growth and big city malaise is starting to emerge. On the realistic premise of limited ground transportation development space, speeding up the development of the underground rail transit system has been put on the agenda. In 2001, when Beijing succeeded in its Olympic bid, Wang Hao was appointed as the deputy general manager of Beijing Subway Group Company. He was exclusively responsible for the financing and construction of the Beijing Subway. Beijing Subway Group first proposed an external financing scheme when faced with a huge financial gap. It was estimated that it would spend a total of 63.6 billion yuan building the five planned subway lines, but the government would only offer 35% of the funding. This meant that 65% of the capital, about 41.34 billion yuan, would have to be found elsewhere. Wang Hao placed his hopes on large international financial institutions. The financial budget was limited and was insufficient to satisfy the requirements of infrastructure development. The loans from international financial institutions couldn't meet the huge capital demands of Asian infrastructure construction. So was the infrastructure project attractive enough to garner support from private capital investment? The huge investment and funding gap, the long construction period needed for infrastructure projects, and the magnitude of the construction also enhance the investment risks. Istanbul is an international metropolis divided into two parts by the Bosphorus Strait. On one side is Asia and on the other is Europe. This special geographical position has given the city the unique ability to connect Europe with Asia. Today, it only takes four minutes to cross from Europe into Asia, or vice versa. 
and it is also possible for people to reach the Indian Ocean from the Atlantic Ocean by train. Early in 1860, Abdul Magid, the emperor of the Ottoman Empire, put forward the idea of building an underwater tunnel to connect the two parts of Istanbul. However, the technological conditions were too immature at that time, so the idea never made it off the blueprint. As one of the biggest cities in the world, the transportation pressure of two million people crossing the Bosporus Strait meant the two bridges across the water were extremely crowded. To alleviate the congestion, work on the Marmara Subsea Tunnel began in 2004. From proposing the idea of the Marmara Underwater Tunnel to the official commencement took 145 years, and from the start of the construction of the tunnel to its opening took another nine years. That is to say that it took 153 years to make the tunnel a reality. This long cycle, low return and the high risks involved all prevented private capital from flowing into this important infrastructure project. Because uh, what um, Asia lacks is infrastructure and to speed up the development and to create wealth for the people, uh, to the average people, I think infrastructure is very important. And uh, it is difficult to raise money for infrastructure financing. This infrastructure gap is large and widening. The public sources only cover averagely 25% of the demand. The need to fulfill the gap is unlikely to be met from the government budget, even if the fiscal condition is improving. The future of Asian countries as the global engine of growth could not be sustained. Therefore, other non-public financial sources must be mobilized to fill the gap. The Boar Al Forum for Asia is dedicated to pushing Asian economic integration. In 2013, at the annual conference themed Restructuring, Responsibility and Cooperation, Asia Seeking Development for All, Chinese President Xi Jinping put forward the idea that China would accelerate the process of its connectivity with neighboring countries and actively explore and establish a regional financing platform. We with regard to Asia, uh, World Bank, including certainly IFC and ADB, have done a tremendous amount of work in promoting economic development. China itself has benefited enormously from the contribution by World Bank and ADB. Now it's time for China to do something more for this region. And uh, hopefully Chinese contribution will spill over to other regions. The sub-forum, Global Recovery, Paths and the Role of Asia, held later on, proposed the idea of Asian infrastructure cooperation. Yadu 
an open, multilateral financial institution dedicated to infrastructure construction investment is just around the corner. Why does China advocate establishing this type of multilateral financial institution? Since China's reform and opening up in 1978, the Chinese economy has achieved remarkable development. During a period of just over 30 years, China's economy realized rapid growth. The country's highways and rapid transit railway made a leap from zero to the world's top total length of track. Moreover, China is home to the largest concrete gravity dam in the world, the longest cross-sea bridge, the longest rapid transit railway, and various large stadiums. Great achievements in China's economic development have proved the tremendous influence economic development can have in building excellent infrastructure. China's economic development also benefited from preferential loans from the World Bank and ADB. From 1981 to 2015, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development IBRD, and International Development Association IDA, offered a total of $55.7234 billion. From 1986 to 2013, China loaned a total of $29.76 billion through ADB. Quality from one of the poorest countries in the world in the 1980s to the world's second largest economy in 2010, China has already become an important growth engine of the global economy. In respect of the development needs of China itself, and the wishes of the international community, China is expected to contribute more to both the regional and world economy. For many years, China has shared its experience and results with other Asian regions. Under the trend of global economic integration, China's solid development needs Asia and vice versa. And China has long been part of a community of common destiny with other Asian regions. In an age of globalization, that's really we're in the same boat, right? We're in the same boat. We know that's what China calls so called the common destiny, right? So I would say for all countries, the de development. Economic development is still the hard to choose, right? Mm -hmm. Without the economic, uh, sustainable economic development, all country, all economy will get trouble. The power of the world's second largest economy, the strong infrastructure construction capability, and the willingness to share results and experiences with neighboring countries, partners and friends enables China to play a greater role in regional development. Conversely, the tremendous development potential in other Asian regions also provides room for China's sustainable development. All this sets out an excellent basis for mutual development and win-win cooperation in all regions. On the road to seeking mutual development, China has already formed a community of common destiny with other Asian regions.
Asia requires a professional international financial institution to provide a new platform for the financing demands of infrastructure construction in all Asian regions. In October 2013, Chinese President Xi Jinping proposed the creation of the AIIB in Indonesia. 当前亚洲国家，特别是新兴市场和发展中国家的基础设施建设，融资需求巨大，有必要动员更多资金进行基础设施建设。为此，中国倡议筹建亚洲基础设施投资银行。From the restoration of China's seat at the World Bank in 1980 to advocating the establishment of a brand new multilateral financial institution, AIIB has undergone a transition from learner, benefiter and active participant to builder, reformer and important guide of the current international financial system. These processes all prove that after 30 years of development, China has not only seized the momentum in the trend of world pluralism, but indicates China's commitment, courage and willingness to make an even greater contribution to Asia's common development in the future.